How did hospitality help women shape the foundations of the early church? I'm Samantha Corcoran, and this summer, my husband Ryan and I went to Turkey for an incredible tour of the seven churches of Asia from the book of Revelation. One of these cities was Thyatira that we read about in Revelation chapter 2. And it turns out that this is the hometown of Lydia, the seller of purple cloth. Since Lydia's story in Acts 16 begins in Philippi and not Thyatira, I was curious how she got there, and I wanted to learn more about her story. First, I wanted to know what it meant that Lydia was a woman from the city of Thyatira. While we don't know much about her life there, we can see that that's where she got her start in business. Thyatira was the fourth of the seven churches of Revelation, and you can learn more about it from our other travel video linked above. Thyatira was famous worldwide for its expensive purple dye and the fabric that it made. This purple dye could also make shades of red, and the colorful yarn and fabric it made was a luxury commodity that was sold mainly on the international market. And Lydia was a dealer in purple cloth. The term dealer here means a seller, someone who bought and sold goods not manufactured. Women were involved in commercial trade of all kinds in the first century, especially within the textile industry. So it's here in Thyatira that Lydia got her start operating a successful business selling luxury goods to a high-end clientele in the Roman upper classes. She is described as a successful, independent female entrepreneur with wealth and social status, and this plays an important role in growing the early church. The second thing I was curious about is what it meant for Lydia to be a worshiper of God. It's at a place of prayer that we first find Lydia across the Aegean and into modern modern-day Greece in the town of Philippi. In a world of meaningless pagan idolatry and emperor worship, pious Greek and Roman Gentiles found Hellenistic Judaism to be a very appealing religion. Traditionally, it's said that God-fearing Gentiles attended Jewish synagogue services, like at this synagogue that we walked through in Sardis. They believed in one God and followed Jewish customs. In Philippi, Lydia was part of a group of God-fearers and Jews who gathered for their weekly Sabbath meeting at a place of prayer called a prosuche or a prayer house. So here in Philippi, we see Lydia believing and behaving as a Jew, meeting weekly on Shabbat and in community with God's people. Lydia is described as a devout follower of God with a focus on serving God and his people. And this is pivotal to establishing the early church in Europe. The third thing I wanted to know was how her hospitality influenced the early church in Philippi. It turns out that in first century Roman culture, especially here in Macedonia, female patrons were active and influential in the community's public life. We see from ancient inscriptions that women in Philippi were active in civic life and paid for the construction of public works such as statues, buildings, and marketplaces. They even served as patrons of various private and public causes. Lydia seems to follow this Roman model of patronage. What we perceive as modern hospitality was actually first century Roman patronage. By hosting Paul and his missionary team, as well as the meetings of the congregation, she lent them her wealth, clout, and protection. When Lydia invited them to stay at her house, this may have been her entreaty to Paul to become his patron and financially sponsor his team. Paul agreed to this partnership and we see Lydia's home becoming his headquarters in Philippi. As a wealthy commoner or member of the equestrian class, Lydia may have lived in a domus-style house or a villa. She would have had ample space for her own household members plus guests. We see that Lydia's house, which had a lovely atrium, was the perfect gathering place for the new church in Philippi. This partnership in the gospel gave Paul and his companions much more than just a night's stay and breakfast. Lydia's hospitable patronage provided them a headquarters, full funding for their mission work, and protection under her reputation. It's incredible to stop and realize that the church in Philippi was the first church plant on the continent of Europe. It was the birthplace of Christianity in the West, and Lydia was the first convert in Europe. The church at Philippi was used by Paul as a model of generosity. He said, you yourselves also know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel, after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, but you alone. The church was established in Philippi because of Lydia's open heart and her open home, and it grew because of her patronage, her initiative, her courage, and her ministry.